All right, guys. Now, why explain to you what I explained before? Because I want you is going to affect our parameters or criteria that we're going to put in here. So it's going to affect our monthly revenue. It's going to affect our monthly sales units that we need to sell per month because now you understand how much budget you need. So I cannot just go ahead and throw numbers here. Hey, I want something up to $100 and then I don't has too much high sales velocity and then I'm not able to fulfill that. So we need to be realistic. We need to take something that's really gradual. We need to make sure that we're thinking about what we're doing without just throwing numbers just because it looks good on paper. But when it comes to apply it, you actually screwed. Now, this um, tool is Helium 10, something called Black Box. It has multiple ways of finding a product. There's a, I'm going to zoom in a bit so you guys can see. There's a product, there's keyword based, there's competitors, niche, and product targeting. I'm gonna tell you honest truth. Anything here, it just looks a joke for me or it looks like I'm wasting time or just to say, hey, look at me, I have this and that. It's, it's like you're just basically adding a lot of stuff on the tool just to say, hey, I can do this, I can do that. Honestly, I can do everything with the products only. I know the keyword is very accurate because you're getting a keyword-based uh, competition and uh, demand. But honestly, with the product validation, how valued products, just finding the product and then looking at the competitors and see what keywords they're ranking for, I'll be able to achieve the same thing as keywords. Because here, if I find one product and basically it's gonna show me a keyword that's really popular or a keyword that has less competition, it doesn't mean any keyword that related to that specific keyword is, is not going to be saturated. So let's say for example, if I have coffee mug, I have yellow coffee mug, I have yellow coffee mug 20 ounces, and all of a sudden I look at these keywords and I found yellow coffee cup 20 ounces it beautifully, has a low demand, has a medium search volume, but all of a sudden when I look for other keywords that are related to that, all of them are competitive or all of them are just too much. So basically, what? I'm not here to compete on one keyword. I'm here to compete on 20, 30, 50, 60 keywords for me to rank. So having one keyword is not enough. For me, I'm just telling you, I'm gonna use products, but if you want me to use the other ones, I don't mind, but let me show you what I'm gonna do here. Now, I come black box, is basically I'm going to put some filters and whatever the filters are, is going to spit out some keywords for me. Now, first we need to select the categories. Any category we're gonna select, there's few categories that are really good. And when you do this kind of search, I always recommend that you start one category at a time. Do not just select them all and say, you know what, I'm gonna find something. Is you going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of results that we cannot handle or just too confusing. So for me, I narrow it down. So let's say for example, the, I'm gonna show you the best categories. So we have arts and craft, automotive, baby, uh, beauty, and personal care usually is going to be supplement, stuff about care, still good. Photo and camera uh, is a good uh, category, uh, but sometimes you're gonna have, you're not going to have the data for photo and camera, so you're not gonna get the sales volume or the sales or the demand for that specific category, because for some reason, this data is not being shared with the software. Like even if you have the BSR, they cannot translate into money, into monetary, uh, revenue. So, but sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So camera photo is good. Cell phone accessories, forget about it. If you want to lose, go to cell phones, accessories, clothing. I don't like, uh, because there's a lot of variation, a lot of big brands. There's a lot of inventory need to carry needs a lot of, um, uh, cash flow. I'm not into collectible coins. Uh, it's not me. Um, computer accessories. I don't because they're just too competitive electronics. There's a lot of things can go wrong with electronics. So we'll be last resort. This is more, you're going to see spy cameras. You're going to see stuff that Bluetooth connections, and I don't want to deal with it. Groceries and gourmet. You know what? I'm not into food uh, that much because, you know, has expiration date and has some regulation in the groceries. I'm not into uh, homemade products. It's a good place for you to find products that you can mass produce because handmade products is basically sellers are able to do some few products at home and it's gonna be handmade and that's it. I'm not into it because you cannot, I believe, I'm not wrong, you cannot run PPC 
on that specific category. You cannot, um, uh, it's only minimal demand. You're not gonna be able to get the real sales volume and the sales revenue. So for me, I don't use it. Health household, it's great. Home and kitchen, industrial scientific, which is a lot of people shy away from industrial and scientific, but think about it. Industrial scientific, I'm not telling you to go and become a chemist or become a physicist. All here what it does is basically things that we use in manufacturing processes, in uh, industries, uh, stuff like that, like urinal mats. You're going to see stuff like that that more based for businesses. Uh, doesn't mean something complicated. So do not shy away from industrial and scientific. Kitchen and dining, which is similar to home and kitchen, but, you know, it's more about uh, the dining experience. Uh, we have movies, no musical instrument. If you understand it, please go ahead and do something. Musical instrument is good, but I barely can listen and I don't even know the notes. I barely can also for real. I cannot even for the life of me, I can have the same song in my car for maybe. So um, I don't have musical ears. As you see, I have big ears, but not musical ears, especially now with the mask. They go really deep. I'm telling you, they go deep. I was weird, but anyways. Office products are really good. I don't know how it's gonna work with COVID uh, because you know they say people are not gonna go back to work. They think about uh, remote um, uh, work uh, from offices and all this stuff. But office product, even if I'm staying home, I will need the stuff that I'm going to use in a regular job. Or if I'm in job, I need a pencil uh, carrier or I need anything, pens, whatever, you're still gonna use it. Uh, for example, uh, Megan, she has a wrist problem uh, because she types a lot, but she doesn't have those pads uh, to, uh, to support her wrist. And we actually we had to order this because even if you work at home, you still need office products. I believe it's going to be good, but that's on you. Uh, patio lawn and garden is very good category, especially now because everyone's staying home. It's really exploding big time. Uh, but even a regular, excuse me, a regular months, these products, you just need to work on seasonality. You need to check seasonality, which is going to be a part of our validation. The first part of our validation process is going to be about checking your seasonality of a product. But patio lawn and garden, people spend a lot of money on it. It's good. Pet supplies, it's a good. Uh, but I don't like pet and baby category, especially because there's a lot of people who start this business. They have kids. They have pets. They're so emotional with them. And what happened? They're always saturated market. They're always low price items. Uh, very hard to compete in it because everyone's just, they don't know what the hell is doing, happening. Now, if I want to compete in this kind of niches like pet and baby, I will go with something more expensive, a product that maybe costs 40, uh, sorry, will sell for 40, 50 bucks. And I will sell maybe 200, 300 units a month. I'm cool with it. Okay. But if you want to explore, uh, go ahead. But for me, it's not my thing. And uh, yeah, sports outdoor is very good, but when you search that, that specific category, you're going to find a lot of brand names. You're going to find a lot of results, Nike, uh, Reebok, and uh, NFL and all the stuff. So if you do it, uh, do it by itself. As, that's what I recommend, do each category by itself. Tools and home improvement, any homeowners will need tools and home improvement. That means anything that you can uh, hold the frames, uh, anything that's related to your house and people, homeowners, they're so proud of their own house and they always buy things to improve them. Um, once upon a time, I was a homeowner until a few months back. Now I'm not, and I'm actually glad I'm not. Uh, but yes, this is people who spend money. Toys and games is very good. Toys and games is very good category. The only thing you need to pay attention to in toys and games is basically certificates, making sure there is no danger to the kids. And uh, we know how that goes but have your certificates. So now I'm going to go ahead and deselect again, and we're going to start one category at a time. So let's say arts and craft. Okay. Now monthly revenue. You remember when I said before about monthly revenue and I told you you need to be 33% rule of thumb. I believe 8,000 to 15,000 is a good start. 15,000. You can go 17,000 if you want is good is worth your money. If I have eight eight thousand dollars in 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 uh, sales, if I make twenty to twenty five percent, that's going to bring me to sixteen hundred bucks to eighteen hundred bucks, which is good as each product. And don't forget, by having a product that with low monthly revenue, you will reduce the amount of hijackers and people who are really want to sabotage you. 
because the hijackers and big competition, they always want to sabotage the people with the high sellers with high revenue. They don't want to waste their time with people like me and you. Okay. But if we have this kind of product and we replicate it five times, 10 times, now we're talking about big money. Okay. And also there's a side note. When you do your business, this kind of business, you need to make sure that you're giving yourself at least six to 12 months to become really profitable and have a solidified uh, foundation of your business. It needs that much for you to really uh, build a good foundation. So do not hear the hype. Uh, in two months, you become rich or three months. It's hard. Okay. It requires work, requires consistency, but you'll be able to make it. And also the other thing I'll look for in a product, I want to make sure I'm making 50 to hundred bucks net profit or a margin per, uh, per day. Okay. So 50 to hundred bucks per day. It's really good number to set yourself in. Now, minimum price, look, minimum price, this is how much the product sells on Amazon itself. So we can put, let's say $18 to 35, but you can change that. These parameters are not meant set in stone. You need to change them up, or up and down, whatever you feel comfortable. So it's 18 to 35 review count. I always like to do 10 minimum because you don't want to find products that people who have three, four reviews and all of a sudden they just launched a product and all their sales are inflated because of the giveaways or PPC and it's just aggressive. So if I have someone who has 10 reviews, most likely they finish their launch strategy and they're already established and whatever sales or product or this the software is going to give me the results is going to be to a listing that already mature already seasoned. So the data is going to be more solidified, more solid. So I will do 10. You do max. Now a max, do not go ahead only 50 or 25. I think you can go up to 200. There's no problems. So if I work my way through this, I can work myself at 50. I see what the results comes back because I want to be tight. See what results comes back. Then I can increase to 75, turn to 200, then to 125, then 150, then 175, then 200. You play with that all the time. You'll be fine. Okay. Now, um, uh, review ratio, I don't use it. Okay. But I'm going to use something else, which is I'm going to share with you. It's really, really cool. Select tier. I don't use it. Any tier is good for me. Sales year over year is basically how the product is doing from last year to this year. I don't want to see a product that uh, only the growth is slowing down. So usually you can put here, if you want to play with it, you can say, hey, minimum 50%. That means last year they made 10,000. This year they made 15,000. You can do that if you want. I don't play with it. Price change, I don't play with it. But if you want to see a product that only doesn't change in price and consistent, which is I'm going to show you how to validate this product. So I don't want to put a lot of parameters. I don't want to put a lot of filters. It's just going to, it's going to suck the life out of the, the tool and what can, you're not giving it the freedom that it requires. So I will leave this away. Sales change, I don't want best sales period. This is really cool. If you want to find a product that does very well in, uh, in, uh, let's say Valentine. So if I come here and I see a product in February, I say, Hey, I want to see a product. How would they do in February? What are the best product in February? I can choose that if I want it, but for now I'm not going to use it. Now this is, this is, this is very good sales to review ratio. Pay attention with me here. I know it's annoying this stuff, but trust me, it's important. Sales to reviews is basically how many reviews that specific ASIN or that specific seller or competitor is making, how many sales they're making, the percentage of it comparing to how many sales they make. So let me explain that again. So for every hundred sales I make, I expect to make one to three reviews per hundred sales. So that means three sales three reviews, sorry, three reviews for hundred sale. Okay. This is the minimum. That's when you have a regular email follow-up sequence and all the stuff. If you're doing our insert card, you're doing our money chat, you're doing all the stuff I'm going to share with you. You can go up to 10%, 15%. Now what's the cutoff is 20% is the cutoff. Like if you do more than 20%, you basically, you're going to get email from Amazon and telling you your a review manipulation. In my experience, I see anything from eight to 15%, you're good. You're not gonna get dinged for it because that's normal. 
8 to 15. For any established brand that has 8 to 15 is not going to get affected. Why? Because even big brands, they know they're going to get a lot of uh, outside traffic. They're going to get uh, micro influencers. They're going to get a lot of people who's going to review it. So for me here, if you want to do max, start with five, which is 5%, then start with 10, then start with 15 and 20. 20 is the max I would do. Okay. You're going to see a lot of filters. I'm going to show you how to, uh, I'm going to show you the results, uh, how this one is going to affect it in a bit. Monthly sales. Remember I told you why I explained to you how many units you need to sell per month. You need to be very careful here. If you have a price that high like that, which is one third of that is going to be your product, which is here, let's say six bucks. Uh, I will start here from 300 to 400 first. Then I go from 400 to 500, then 500 to 600. I want to make the criteria smaller so I can find smaller chunks of products spitting out. Okay. So 300 to 400 sales per month. I'm okay with that. Okay. Higher the price, lower the monthly sold units per month. Keep that in mind. So you're going to play with these filters. The other thing, number of sellers. I like to have one and three, or actually I don't need to have any one here. I'll just put three here. Now, why I'm limiting number of sellers, if I lower the number of sellers, that means I'm going to increase my chance of finding a product that are not wholesale, are not retail arbitrage, not online arbitrage. Because we know retail and arbitrage, wholesale, usually they share the same listing and we're going to see multiple sellers are on that listing. So now you're going to tell me, Sad, yes, but why you put three? You should have just put one because private label usually is only one person, but that's not the case all the time. And I'll explain why. A lot of times you're going to see some listings that are listed two times, two sellers underneath them of the same seller. So the same seller, if I have one ASIN right now, I can have one FBA and one FBM, which is going to stick to the same listing. So if I put one, I most likely, actually I will, I will not find any products that actually have the FBA and FBM, and I might lose finding a good hot product. Now, why I put three? The third one, it could be the hijacker. If I have a hijacker and this hijacker hijacked my listing, he could be the third one. So I'm okay with it. So I'll put three max for me. So you understand it now? FBA, FBM, the same seller. And the third one, I'm giving you the chance for a hijacker to be in that listing. Now, number of images. It's, I'm not going to do that. I don't do that. Number of images, basically, if you want to play with it, you can play with it to say, Hey, I want to find a product that makes meets all this criteria, but also they have only three images or two images in their listing. Why I would do that? Because I want to find listings that are still making sales, but they're not fully optimized listing wise. That's why I play with the images. If I want the other one, which is really important guys, variation, variation, variation. How many times we find a product and we say, oh my God, making $30,000 per month. And then we find out there's 15 variation or colors or sizes under the same listing. It's tedious. I'm one of the guys I don't like to launch a product with more than three variation. Anything more than that, you cannot compete with them. It's the same thing. I'm trying to launch a product and then I'm trying to compete with, with Walmart. Walmart, they have the same product, but have so many variation. How can I compete with Walmart? They have everything. They, they have so many options that any seller goes in that listing. They're going to see so many options. They don't need to look at me when I have one or two, because we know the human nature likes options, likes to see a product that has a place where they go. They have so many options they can choose from, even if they don't need it, but they want to have it. Okay. So for me, I'll put three max. I'll tell them, Hey, find me product, but three max. Now for weight, I don't touch the weight. The weight, I am not, uh, hey, I want to be one pound or I want to be two pound or 10 pound, whatever it is. If the product, I can double my money, I'm good with it. Now, the magic number usually is less than one pound. So any product less than one pound, you're actually going to have a way better fulfillment fees and Amazon fees. So it cuts it really, way, uh, cuts it really, really good. Uh, but uh, just leave it open and you'll be good to go. So let's say here, and let's search and see how many products is going to come up to 19 products. 
and we're going to go through them. Now, if I go ahead and put here, let's say five, which is sales to reviews, you're going to see we have one only because we did so sophisticated the whole thing uh, too much. You can go 20 if you want. If you miss this one, it doesn't matter because one of our criteria we're going to use is see like now here, every product that I found that only up to 20% sales to reviews ratio, which is really great. But I'm going to keep it away because honestly with our, I mean, this is very important. If you find any product with 20%, honestly, and lower, or 15% or, I mean, actually 10% below is very good. Um, now, also there's something I forgot to mention why this is important. A lot of times we go ahead and find a product that has 15 reviews today. And all of a sudden we are so happy to say, oh my God, this product is good, but manufacturing time, shipping time takes 60 days. But then we found out, hey, listen, the sales to review ratio for that specific product is 20%. So that means for every hundred, they're making 20 reviews. So if they sell 500, 500 units a month, that means they're making a hundred review a month. And if it takes you two months to bring it, that means this guy is already ahead of you for 200 reviews, which is very hard for us to catch up to. So I don't want you to get into a niche where someone is manipulating the data and is getting so much reviews by the time you launch your product, it's very hard for you to compete. So that's why if you find something that's moderate, a competition that's fair, and everyone's getting 5%, 7%, yes, you can compete with it, even if it takes you two months to launch the product. That's why this one is very important, very crucial, and I think you should really uh, try to find a product with good sales to review ratio, because it's going to help you a lot. But let's go ahead now, and since I blah, 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 do you have any question about this before I jump in into the product and how I look at them? All right, everyone's like, okay, cool, nobody. All right, uh, let's go ahead and look for products now. All right, so we have here uh, Hemi Gaucher paint set. Paint set here, we have a guy who's 23 reviews, making 8,000, really cool. I will go ahead first, I'll do from the monthly, highest to the lowest, and we'll start from the highest to the lowest. Wood art box table, easel. So maybe that will be good. So now all what I'm doing for this process, I am just opening up the potential product and look at them and say, you know what? That could be a good product. And then we're going to validate later on. But for now, we're just looking for potential products. Okay, here we're not saying this is the one. We're just finding potential because when we validate, we're going to there, we're going to have the confirmation that we need. So let's come here and open this one and go up then let's say bracelet string too many colors here it looks like everyone's going to be the same here uh carrying back compatible with circuit maker and this guy has 50 reviews making 9000 let's see what that is uh anything weird is good <laughs> cup turner uh this is cup turner 28 making 9000 is great let's let's look at it too uh RCC, the arts, I don't like this is because here there's not much you can do to the product to modify it. Everything you're going to look is going to be the same colors and you're just going to uh, going to compete on quantity and uh, it's just going to be too tedious. There's nothing physically can change the product makes it good. White uh, blank canva panels. The canva panels are also good because they have sizes. Let's look at this guy. 28 reviews making 8,000, which is good. Uh, this is not much here. Let's go ahead and use the same thing, but let's use home and kitchen. I just want to show you a few products. I'm going to use multiple, uh, multiple categories just for you guys to see how I think of things and less units you get. Like for example, if we looked at this category by itself, arts and craft and was 13 and it's not enough, I can start playing here. I can put a hundred reviews. And it's going to be more. I can go ahead and change this from 300. I can put it to 400 to 700. Make it higher. Let it breathe. Monthly revenue. Play with the monthly revenue. Instead of 8,000, put 10,000 to 20,000. Whatever it is, just play with them and get more results per category. But now I just want to share with you how I um, go about, let's like, see, now we have 200. 
200 units. Actually, I like to have less than 200, to be honest with you. That's okay, 200 is 200. Okay, let's go with multi-revenue. Again, now we have fire document bag. 41 reviews making 16,000. That's cool, let's open this. Now, uh, this stuff, uh, Bath and Body Works is a brand, I'm not gonna use it. Uh, simple trending heavy duty uh, laundry mat. I just zoom in a bit here. This is, could be something, honestly. So we, we it's cool, it's in the bigger size. Has been eight months in the business, which is great. Remember, I don't want something that's not, look at this, eight months in the business, and he has only 44 reviews, and he's making 13,000. That could be something. This is really cool. Number of images, 8.8 .8 pound. Uh, now here, I don't do this one, electronic, and a lot of things can go wrong, and also portable air conditioner, which is could be, I mean, we know it's seasonal, unless you use air conditioner in winter. I mean, if you're not in Canada, for sure you'd be able to use it, for us, we cannot. Flexibility professional, refills, I'm not gonna use refills, air conditioner, same thing. This is shoe rack organizer, I think. Huh? We have here a bread uh, proofing basket. We can look at that as well. This one I know last year, I knew I know this product. It always does very well in Q4 for some reason. People, I think they make a lot of bread. Uh, reusable half mask respirator. Um, I'm not into anything with masks, especially now with Amazon, with what's happening. They're limiting a lot of people. Flashlights, electronic, I'm not gonna use it. This is basic. A toaster, which is very hard for us to find multiple keywords, so I'm not going to use it as much. We have wall shelf brackets, six inch heavy duty rustic floating shelf. That could be something. Shelf, uh, shelving, uh, brackets only by themselves. So maybe there's something here. Look, 11 reviews making 12,000, which is could be really cool. Uh, we have electronics. I'm not going to use that. With I mean, you can this. Anything with tools like this, you're gonna compete with big brands and I don't wanna do that. This is inner bot replacement, very simple. I'm not into. Uh, filter with organic vapor relief. You see that's filters. Filters is for specific mask or specific things. You don't wanna get into that because uh, has a lot of implications, has medical equipment. You might get into some issues here. Uh, this one's cool actually, metal three swivel arm uh, bathroom towel holder. Could be good, it's been 21 months. I can't believe it, 21 months and have 40 reviews only. This is really cool. I'm gonna open those. See, I'm just opening the things that I feel I'm interested in. Okay, here, Love Heaven Memorial. Like, like this one, I, this product, remember I told you giftable is very good. Uh, but here, that could be something. But the problem is with a lot of beginners or us beginners and newbies, if we don't have the art, uh, we might choose something that we only like and the rest of people are not going to like because based on design. So here you need to be doing testing if you choose something like that because you need to make sure the design people like. So here in this case, we can use maybe PicFu or we can use our friends to see what design they like the most or we can do testing. We can get this product, send it to Amazon, the design that we like, test it, see if people like it and then we can launch it for a bigger order quantity. Because what's nice about, I mean, this one looks like someone who just knows a little bit about Amazon, but he's doing very well because look, uh, Morgara, whatever it is, memorial gift, and a sympathy gift, permanent gift, condolences gift, everything with gift, 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 because these are the main keyword and he just put them there everywhere instead of making more readable. You see here, not fully optimi optimized, which is good, something that we can do. Um, anything with blanket is gonna be hard with betting, you're gonna competing with a lot of other people based on a keyword, uh, but doesn't mean you're not gonna be able to find secondary keyword that you can compete on, but it's too much. Um, let's see what else. Um, umbrella base weight, this is, could be something for a month only, 17 reviews. Um, LED lights, electronics, simple, pots, popcorn maker, filters, no. Uh, boxes could be something. Lights here could be seasonal. Here, electronic with beeping. Oh, this air beer fire wearable. Uh, the other thing we have light lamps, electronics. But look, electronics. I want to talk about electronics a bit. If it's a simple technology, 
that's been there for a long time, I'm not worried about getting it. Like everyone knows how to light up a light now. So it's not something I'm gonna prevent doing just because it's electronic. It's a light. You know what I mean? Technology has been proven from a long time. So do not be shy away from it. Okay, do not be shy away from it. It could be something really cool. And actually that was one of the product that I uh, was validating as well. Mask, no bags. Uh, bags are good, but it could be a lot of variation here. Like see here, you have three variation already. So uh, you need to know this is variation colors, could be sizes and could get into a lot of competition. Okay, let me talk about this one a bit. Craft paper bags are really cool. If you're competing on the keyword itself, craft pa uh, paper bags. But imagine everyone who has multiple sizes, whether small, big, large, medium, uh, longer, taller, whatever it is, they're going to compete on the same keyword, which is black craft paper bags or craft paper bags, which means the competition is going to be high. The cost of PPC is going to be high because everyone competing on the same keyword. There's nothing that very, like if I had a keyword here saying uh, large uh, uh, black craft paper bags and has 10,000, yes, I can do that. No problem because I have exactly the long tail keyword, the exact product that I'm trying to sell. It's, it's exact keyword that has a good search volume, but you don't want to be into something that really gets you into a lot of competition because everyone competing on the same basic keyword. I hope that made sense. If it's not, ask me a question, no problem. Uh, refrigerator, refrigerator organizers. Organizers are good, but as I told you, refrigerator organizer could be a lot of things with refrigerator or, organizer. For example, here, if I go ahead and do refrigerator organizer, you see, you see what you find? Like you find the baskets, you find this, you find the one on the handle, um, you're going to find the one for the cans. So it's going to be a lot of things competing on the same keyword, regardless of what the shape is. And that could be a little bit dangerous. So that's why I keep away from organizers myself. All right, so you're gonna go through them guys and see what's up, but this is the process for you to find product and then put them here and then we're gonna validate them. Now, once I get the product and I get them here to see which one I'm going to pin to my uh, potential products, I'm gonna go through a few things that I just look at primarily, just say, you know what, that's good. Let me look into it deeper. That's what we're going to get into right now. So let's say that's the first product I found. Usually when I do this, I might have here maybe 20, 30 products. It's not going to be only that. It's going to be 20, 30. But if I go more, uh, my computer will crash. So <laughs> just if you do it, do not uh, worry if you see a lot of tabs open up for yourself. You have 20, 30, 40, 50, who cares? And you're going to validate them as how I'm going to show you right now. Not validation. I'm going just to see, validate if they're good potential products for me to validate. So let's go ahead and see portable air purifier. This is our mini, mini portable air purifier. Go right click. No, uh, a lot of people are gonna ask me about this tool. So let me tell you what it is. It's context menu search. That means anything you highlight here, you can do right click, come down and I can go to any platform that I want. So I have Amazon US, Amazon.ca, eBay, us and ebay.ca so i'll go amazon us and right away is going to bring the keyword to my search results and show me in the old department this is important to be an old department you don't want to be in a specific department i want to find the competition on every page on every category that exists in amazon now second thing i'm going to do i'm going to look just primary to look at how many results comes back i see a thousand results comes back Usually I like to see less than a thousand, but it's not a rule that's solid. Okay. This is just telling you, Hey, you know what? If it has 10,000 or 5,000, that's a lot. That means a lot of competing products are competing on the same keyword. And there's a lot. I like to see less than a thousand, preferably less than 500. If you get something within a hundred, 200, 300, you're in golden. I mean, really good things that you need to look into. Once I'm done with this, I'm just going to look at the product very quickly of the result that comes back and see if actually what I'm trying to sell is the same. Now, if I look here, I'm, I'm seeing mixed results from mini air purifier for rooms. I'm also lo looking at something air purifier for a necklace and bracelet. 
So that's mixed, right? So when you do that, just keep that in mind because when you do validation, we need to separate that. If we want to validate products, I'm not going to take all these keywords. I'm not going to take all this competition because this product is not competing with me where I'm selling something like that, wearable, okay, or personal. So that's two different things. Now let's go ahead just to see how the niche is, how the market, what's the demand, what's the competition look like. So I'm going to go ahead, do x-ray. First of all, let's look at 82 only uh, search volume, which is really low. Now also keep in mind, all these numbers mean nothing. They're just numbers. Uh, actually yesterday for a first time, and I don't take it as a rule, for a first time, I found a product that has four stars. The first time. Usually always one, one and a half, two, one, one and a half, one, two. If you see four, you're amazing. I mean, actually I'm giving myself some kind of love and I'm saying I'm amazing. If my wife doesn't say it, I say it. But no, seriously, I think do not take that number good. We're gonna look at it deeper. Now, anything with sponsor ad, I'm gonna take out because this is only paid positions. I don't want them. So I'm gonna take this one off. And now I'm gonna look at the revenue and reviews. So first of all, I'm gonna look at the revenues. This is our organic ranking. I'm seeing a guy making 5,000 with 27 reviews, 21,100, thousand dollars with 875, 171,000 with 3,000. Now here, if I find like three competitor, four competitors, more than a thousand reviews, I might just say, you know what, to the next product. But if I see someone has 3,000 reviews, but also a guy with 300 still making kind of relative amount of money, let's say this guy making 100, but this guy making 50, with, with 200 reviews making 50,000, this guy with uh, uh, 3,000 reviews making 100,000, uh, who cares? The reviews later on, it becomes nothing. The most important are the first reviews, you know, the 10, 20 reviews, 25 reviews, anything extra than that, it just becomes like um, uh, utility. It becomes like, hey, yeah, I have more reviews than you. That's it. But as importance, it's not going to play that much of a game. Uh, because what's the difference between 400 and 800? Okay, both of them are have good sales. Both of them have good, good uh, return. And as a buyer, I'm not going to look at it like, oh my God, 3,000, I'm going to choose him. No, if this guy offered me a better product and he has less reviews, I'm going to take him. So now I'm going to look at the sales and see if they're spread out. I see, hey, look, a guy with 29 making 11,000. This guy with 64 making 4,000. That means the reviews means nothing here because the guy with less making more money. Uh, we have uh, 273 reviews making 7,000 and this guy 125 making 14,000. So you see, reviews are not relative. But all I want to see here, the top 10, 15 positions, there's some sales are spread out to the budget that I'm trying to look into. If I'm trying to make 15,000 and the average here is making 15,000, I'm good with it. Then it's something I want to look into deeper. What I like here where we see is not much of reviews. I like that. You know, it's very easy. And also people with low reviews making money. So let's go ahead and do it by low reviews. Look at guy here. Uh, 125 making 14,000, 64, 5,000 here. This is the wearable ones that are actually sucking if comparing to the other ones, because see here, we have two wearables, 33 making 4,000. But the ones that are making the good money, the solid ones, the one that actually here one is very nice and simple is making uh, 14,165. But let's see the trend is going down a bit anyways. Here it tells me how much the sales are making and how low is coming down. It looks like it's going down a bit, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, for me, just because it's mixed and the two products are showing up, I'm not gonna choose it. And I don't think it's a good potential product for me. So I'm just gonna take it away. If you wanna look into it, we can look into it. But since I'm gonna have a lot of a lot of products to just to see as a potential and validate. I'm going to keep this one away. Uh, now the second thing here, we have three swivel arm bathroom towel holder. Swivel arm bathroom towel holder. Let's see that first. Now, a lot of times you're not going to know the keyword because people are really uh, getting, um, they're not, they didn't write their, their title very well. So if you want to know the main keywords, for specific product, like if I came here, I didn't know what's up. What I can do 
I can come here, take this ASIM, come to black box, come to Cerebro. Then I'm going to put the ASIN. Then I'm going to get the keyword, which is going to do reverse ASIN on that product. It's going to give me all the keyword that's going to spit out. And then also I'm going to do filters. I'm going to come here. I'll put 500 searches minimum. I'm going to put uh, organic rank, let's say 35. And I would like to see the organic ranking only. So I'm telling him, show me what this guy, this competitor is ranked for on the top 35 positions has 500 searches minimum per keyword. And also show me the organic position, not what they're indexed for, what they are ranking for. So now from 3000, let's see how much we're going to come up with. 36 keyword only. So you see that it's basically had a hundred times more than what we need. So now here, if I come with this and I see all the stuff he's ranking for one here, I can say tower rack stand. That's one could be. I can look at this and see the results. Is it the same? It's almost the same what I need, but I need the one with the swivel, right? But this is enough to tell me about the demand. It has 575. How much search is this thing has? Let's go with search volume higher to lower. Yeah, bathroom towel rack. See, he's ranked 33 for this kind of keyword. So let's go up and let's check here. See now 8,000 results come back for a regular towel rack so this is not very high related keyword uh rack for pool standing towel rack uh a free stand for bathroom let's see this one okay this is not bad actually the other keyword secondary ones like see everyone if they see this they say oh my god this is the keyword i want to rank for because it has thirty three thousand. but they forget all the little ones that doesn't have a lot of competition. Look, 282, which is really great for a, pro, for a keyword that has 3,000. That's perfect. This is a secondary keyword I can. So let's go ahead now. Actually, we need to look into this one, 3,200. And let's see the results here. Uh, so we have 15. This is... 1,000, 12,000, 26, 10,000, 12,000, 19,000. Let's go highest revenue as here high. But still, the ones here in the middle, which is I want to be at, they're still low 236, 26, 58. So that's something I will look into a little bit deeper and see how we can validate. So if I want to validate this, so I can come here. Uh, where is it? Uh, uh, this is the listing. I can come here, put this product research, and then I can go ahead and pin it here. Just pin it. It's going to be saved in the app itself. So this is done. I remove this. Now let's go to the next one. You do the same thing. A wall, a wall shelf bracket. Oh, let's see. What's that wall shelf bracket? See, so 5,000 results comes back, which is a little bit scary and let's see the results 5,000 that's a lot see that here very hard to differentiate the only thing you can differentiate like this guy how he did it here with the design it could be length strength but if you look at it there's not much you can change so let's see what's the competition look like hmm let me look at that. I mean, we have 364 reviews making $37,000. That's really cool. So if I go, let me finish. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go from lowest reviews. So if we stick around these areas, if we get 40, 50 review, you see, competition is too high. The people who have established themselves already, people are going to buy their product because there's not much you can differentiate in this product. So even the people who have a good product and has 50 to 60 reviews, they're still making three to 7,000. That means if I come in and try to reach, try to reach 50, 60 reviews, I'm expecting to make this kind of sales. So this is what I'm here worried about. 
the competition looked very good even for 300 but looks like people when they come to this market they just look at the highest reviews because they cannot see the difference between one product to another do you agree with me they don't see it like if i want to come buy this product i'm not going to say oh my god this metal looks better than this one i cannot see it unless i touch it so what i'm going to trust here i'm going to trust the higher review count which is going to make the decision for me to pick this product or you need to spend money on marketing like this guy has 98 uh, 98 reviews but he had to make first positions for main keyword to be able to get a decent bsr how much money he's making we never know so this is is going to be hard to differentiate since you don't know what you're going to differentiate else but is this market has potential yes it has so uh we can validate that if you wanted guys but as you see this guy differentiated with little screws which is cool but i'm not sure how well they're gonna go so in this case of product like for me if i wanted to do this product i'll validate it first but i will also go ahead and test this product before i launch it so i'll order 50 units send them in test the product because i am worried about the cost per click for that specific product okay because there's nothing unique i can add to it there's not much i can add uh, but let's go to the next one and you're going to keep doing the same thing here uh, uh, bread benetton proofing uh, basket so let's say this so now if you don't know how to do the keyword as i told you go to reverse asin find the main keyword be good like see this one i will take this one keyword because i don't think everyone everyone's going to call it a bread proofing basket and it's going to be 676 which is really good less than a thousand is perfect but also we're going to have some issues here where differentiation differentiating is going it has to be strong because looking at it everyone's going to look the same you don't want to be only adding things you want to be making the product look better and better like equality wise so I would read all the bad news. We see like even a guy here with 1,200, 3,399 reviews. And they are, they don't have bad reviews. They have 4.7. So to differentiate this product is going to be very hard since those people already, they have high reviews. And I was expecting for them to have a very bad uh, rating, but they don't. That means anything they will source is going to be good quality. So here, it's a little bit hard for me to differentiate, but let's look at the market because maybe I can differentiate here with my packaging or maybe I can differentiate with my, uh, uh, with my images. Maybe they have a very bad quality listing. Maybe uh, uh, copyright is not well. Maybe they're not ranked for enough keywords for most related keywords. So that's another thing we can look into. And I think Nancy knows this product. Remember last year I came to you, I told you about this product. I thought it was gonna be good. And we're skeptical. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But look how people now make it. Three hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. Three hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. And he looked at it in July, two thousand nineteen, when I told you last year. You see, who could have made the three hundred thousand dollars? You know what I mean? So also look at it here. Since I told you everything looks the same, people with the high reviews making good money, and anything below now is becoming a little bit, little bit weird because look. When I come to the lowest, I'm getting 3,000, 10,000, 6,000. Actually, these people here, they, there is good money because look, even here at 47, 50, they're making 32, 9,000, uh, 5,000. So I think here, if you get a good product, you will be able to make good money here. I really even now, that. even now you think? I think if we, if we go ahead and validate very well and compete on keywords if they have enough keywords that we can target if it has like let's say 30 40 keywords that we can really target relevant maybe we can do but we have to validate it so we have to see the competition where they're ranking for what they're missing what keywords they're missing to rank on and we try to compete on that way but um it's cool okay so still as i said if you're interested in this one we can also pin it and we can do some, uh, if we find any product that's good, it's going to be anything for the people here in the, in the call. So anybody who's in our course, in the first 25 people, uh, any product that we find and looks good potential, we'll give it to one of you guys. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to validate a lot of them with you. And whatever we pick good is good. 
was not good, it's not good, but you will call dibs and we'll give it to someone and that's it. Uh, so let me just go ahead here. So you uh, have a contest, print. right? A contest, contest is different. Or... This is different. I'm just oh, saying, okay. if we, I mean, this is already validated, already done for the two people. I'm talking if we doing validation and in the course for the validation process or for how show them how to validate and we come up across something that's really good, we're just going to give it to one of people here. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so let me get here. Let's say this guy with 10,000. Let's see what happens. All right. So you guys are going to keep doing that for everything and just pin them. And then the next step, which is going to be validation. So I'm going to stop here because I think we talked enough about things. And now you know what we need to do, guys, as a product. You know what, uh, how we find a potential product, not validated yet. We're going to save them. Once I save them, I have 50 ideas. I will take them, validate all of them. And then I'm going to see maybe 20 product or 15 products of them that have the highest potential product. And then I'm going to go work through them, see which one I want to launch first, which one second, and I will keep going with that. So, and next session, I'm going to teach you multiple other ways of finding products and not without a tool, without a tool, and which is, I mean, with a tool, but it's not going to be traditional way of finding products. Mm -hmm.